close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Try to be consistent. Stay with the breath as long as you can. If the mind seeps, slips off, just bring it right back. This goodness that we're creating in our mind has to come from a good foundation, and the foundation requires that your mind be mindful and alert. Without these qualities, you're lost. You can remember things, then, then they help you. If you don't remember things you've learned, then the learning doesn't really serve any purpose at all. That's what mindfulness is for. And then there's alertness, which is to watch what you're actually doing, to make sure that the good things you've learned in the past are applied in the present moment, that you don't forget. We depend a lot on the past. We tend to forget that there's so much emphasis on being in the present, being in the present. But uh, who taught us that? There must have been people who taught us that, otherwise we would have no idea that being with the breath would accomplish anything. So we have to remember that we're indebted to a lot of people. Today's Mother's Day, we think about how we're indebted to our mothers. It's also the day, the anniversary of the day that John Fuang passed away, one of my teacher, and we have to think about how we're all indebted to our teachers. And so one thing to show our appreciation for that debt is to put into practice the good things they taught. If there's some way that we can help them, we're happy to help them. If they've passed on, okay, well then we take that goodness and make sure it doesn't die from the world. Because they went to all that effort to teach us, to raise us. And then if we just throw it away, then it's to no purpose at all. But if you remember that, that these are the good things that people have passed down. This is what, what makes human beings different from animals, is that we have a culture that we can pass down from one generation to the next, about the things that really are of value, things that really do make a difference, things that lead to a genuine happiness inside. And so we want to appreciate that fact and make sure that we put these teachings to use. After all, as the, as the Buddha said, the Dharma that he found is in the world all the time, but the knowledge of the Dharma is something that comes and goes. The Buddha finds it, stays with us for a while, and then people start forgetting it. They start wandering away and interested in other things. And that good knowledge just gets forgotten. And then it takes a long time before another Buddha can come up and find it again. So that knowledge is here with us. It's been passed down by our parents, it's been passed down by our teachers. So let's make sure that at least it doesn't die with us, that we keep it alive in the world. And this is our way of showing our gratitude for the help that they've made. As the Buddha said, that gratitude is a sign of a good person. As a good person appreciates the fact that okay, the help that he or she received from teachers and parents and other people didn't come free. In other words, they had to make an effort. It wasn't that they were forced to do this. One of John Fung's famous statements is that nobody hired us to be born, and no one is hiring us to practice. They're not forcing us, but it's good knowledge to pass on. They see the goodness of the knowledge that they've gained in the past, and they pass it on to us. So we want to make sure that it stays with us, stays alive with us, that we benefit from it, and the people who see our good example will benefit from it as well. So the Dharma is not just words. And the good things we learn from our parents are not just words. They're actually embodied in our actions. And this is what keeps them alive. This is how we show our gratitude, our appreciation for the fact that the good things that people have done, it took a lot of effort on their part. And so we're willing to put out the effort ourselves. If someone doesn't have gratitude, it shows they don't appreciate the effort that other people have put in to the help they've received. So why are they going to go and create any effort? They'll just do what they want. So when you're looking around, if you see people who don't show a sense of gratitude to their parents, don't show a sense of gratitude to their teachers, okay, stay away from those people. You can't trust them. It's the people who are really grateful. Those are the people who understand goodness and understand the effort that's needed to keep goodness alive. Those are the people who are the more likely that you can trust. And if you embody those qualities in yourself, then you find that you can trust yourself as well. Because after all, we do have to depend on ourselves. It's things that our parents, things that our teachers taught us, they on themselves are not going to make us good. We have to make the effort. And if we don't make the effort, then we're at, at the mercy of our moods. Whatever comes whispering into our ears or whispering into our head, we just go with it. But if we realize that okay, goodness requires some restraint, requires some effort, and we're willing to put that effort into our lives, that's a sign of gratitude. It's also a sign of wisdom. The two qualities go together.